Good evening, hello and uh, welcome. The Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, ISA, Ghana's uh, short-term outlook is uh, pretty positive considering the current projected growth rate of 8%, which could sustain uh, with strong investment and in the oil and gas sector. Public infrastructure and favorable commodity prices, uh, they however describe this same economy as very fragile. According to ISA, the current economic development puts Ghana in a vulnerable state. In the most recent uh, state of Ghanaian economy report, the institute states that though growth rate in Ghana is high, the drivers of the rate is problematic because the sectors contributing is not equitable, especially the non-extractive agricultural industrial sectors. The report also indicates that government's current domestic borrowing level is not sustainable. Government wants to burden uh, the, broaden the tax base but get more revenue. The opposition says government has failed to meet uh, certain statutory economic obligations. And now ISA says, tread carefully. What gives? I want to find out. So I am talking to uh, my immediate left is uh, Professor Corte, head of uh, Department of uh, Economics in the University of Ghana. And then to my extreme left, uh, Professor Felix Ankoma Asante, director of uh, ISA in Legon. And they promised that even though they are professors, we're just going to talk basic English. So uh, on the behalf of all the viewers, I'm saying thank you. My name is Nana Sakwa and this is PM Express. Right after the break, the conversation begins. Hello and welcome back to the show PM Express. And today I'm sure you've read and heard so many times in the media. One minute we as economic indicators we are slipping back. We move from I think 101 to 114, and then the next minute we are growing by eight percent. Sometimes we grew by 14 percent. The next minute inflation is down, is up. It's fragile. No, it's not fragile. We are not broke. We are just cash trapped. What is the state of the nation's economy? What is Ghana's economic performance? So I have with me in the studio two professors, two, not one to tell us what the state of the economy is, as to whether it's good, bad, somewhere in the middle, lukewarm, or indeed we are heading the wrong direction. We need to put the brakes on and head the right direction. From my extreme left again is Professor Felix Ankoma Asante, who is the director of ISA in Legon. And then to my immediate left is Professor Corte, head of Department of Economics, University of Ghana. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to start with, are we heading the wrong direction as far as economic development is concerned, or we are treading the right path and then we should just carry on going? I'll take you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I wouldn't say we are heading towards the wrong or the right direction. I think what we need to do is to take certain hard decisions to move the economy. And some of the hard decisions will be very painful, but I think at the end of the day, there'll be growth in the economy. So, so but that to, is... Yeah, to move the economy, yes. we, we are moving. I mean, at 8%, that's a pretty, you know, uh, movement. But is it the right direction? Um, in terms of the growth, yes. Uh, compared to most countries, I think our growth rate is, 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 is good. But the challenge is the growth being reflected in the standard of living, the growth being reflected mm -hmm. in the average Ghanaian lifestyle. And that is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, you, are you are growing, everybody is praising you, but the citizenry is complaining. And that is where we need to uh, sit down, assess ourselves, and try and find a way of addressing their concern. We all know that the growth is being pushed by one main sector, which is industries, and that is where we have the oil and gas. Mm -hmm. okay. So we need to understand what is happening in that business. Who are those in the business? Can we spread the benefits to the larger populace? And those are the things that we need to have a discussion on and come to a consensus on. Good. Now I'm going to look at employment. 
yeah. Ghana versus the world. Yeah. And then I ask myself, uh, as a nation, if indeed the world uh, unemployment goes up, can we also say, oh, it's, it's all over. So uh, if unemployment is high in this part of the world, you know, we can't complain because in America, in Spain and Greece, unemployment is going up. Do we have any leg to stand on in terms of unemployment, Prof? Um, yeah, to a large extent, um, we are in a globalized economy, and therefore whatever happens in the Western world uh, will certainly affect our economy. Um, as somebody bluntly uh, may put it, when the U.S. sneezes, Ghana or Africa catches cold, and therefore you cannot delink that global integration. Um, but having said that, if we put in the right policies, uh, we'll be able to cushion ourselves despite the challenges uh, being faced in the Western economy. The only unfortunate situation for us is we do not have, have um, up-to-date or current data on employment or unemployment. Mm -hmm. It is only when we have our census data that we are able to tell the level of unemployment in the country. And um, it is quite difficult and, and it's quite unfortunate as, and, that worrying. as, as and worrying. Uh, um, I mean, you can ask the Minister of, fin uh, sorry, Minister of Employment whether he knows the current figure. One thing I do as an economist is pick the economist uh, magazine or newspaper and towards the back you see quarterly unemployment figures, GDP growth targets and whatever. For most serious countries, now you ask us, what is the unemployment rate for this quarter, for this year? It's difficult to know. and. and uh, we, we cannot plan. exactly so you cannot continue saying we are growing yes we are growing but how are you affecting lives how are you creating the jobs and i think for us that is the key factor we need to answer we are growing at seven eight percent is it adequate per capita income is growing at five percent population growth is over 2.7 percent so in net terms we are not adding much that is why you see people say we don't feel the growth in our pockets because we are not growing, we are not adding much to our economy. Uh, secondly, the sectors that are driving the growth. Um, we all know that it's agriculture, it is manufacturing. Agric employs close to 50% of the workforce and manufacturing. And if you grow oil, you grow retail banking, wholesale, retail trading, uh, you're not really providing sustainable jobs. And that is where we need to tackle the issue. Because yeah, I was really, that's where I want to talk about, you know, well, being a professor, you even answered my question before I asked it. Because I was going to say that if Americans complain about unemployment, well, maybe in this side of the world, maybe the big banks and the big insurance companies may be affected. But for people who could, you know, use rubber to do a chaliote factory and, and, uh, Maybe even ceramics, teacups, stuff like that. We, we could still grow uh, employment in that section regardless of how America is feeling, whether they, you know, uh, that's what I was thinking that mm. maybe we don't have any excuse to say because they are suffering, we should also suffer. Yeah, certainly. The, is it the degree of integration? Uh, we are a small, tiny economy. Mm. And therefore, um, if you notice, when there was a the global financial crisis in 2009, uh, most of our indicators were quite strong. It tells you that we are not totally integrated into the world economy. Mm -hmm. We have some kind of independence or autonomy to do things in a different way. So if there are challenges in these countries, uh, of course, we also have our domestic resources and domestic factors to try to use to streamline an, our economy. And that is where we, we should focus. Otherwise, if we continue to over-depend on aid, uh, then we have this challenge uh, where any situation or crisis that is being faced in this country... The aid stops coming aid and stop then... coming in, then we start complaining. I mean, it's, it's about time we grow our domestic resources. The other thing that I... The 
economy. We, we, we hear that uh, it's fragile. Then you hear that, no, no, it's fine. Then the minister says, no, it's not broke. I'm only, you know, I'm only cash trapped. Mm -hmm. w what is the true state of the economy? I don't know who, who, who's best to answer that for me. Prof. Um, I mean, it depends on, depend on where you sit. Mm -hmm. You agree that it's fragile or it is not. For we outside, we see that things are not moving as we expect. And if we say things are not moving as we expect, the, the, the economy itself is, is, you need a stable economy, it's an economy you don't have much strikes, you don't have much strikes. An economy where if you want to do your business, you have your resources doing it. If you want to do your trade, you go ahead and doing it. And then anybody finds something doing that economy. But if, if you're in an economy where once one group complains and the other is doing the other, the other is doing well and the other, then that is where the, the problem is. We need an economy where anybody who wants to work should find work. If you are in business, if you are in private sector, you should be able to operate. But when one part of the economy is crowded out, then that is where this issue of whether the economy fragile or not becomes an issue. I would say I think we need to do a little more work. We need to do more work to make the, 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 the economy stable as we all expect. Prof, you've done a beautiful <coughs> you know, research and the performances and statistics yeah. and everything here. Yes. How do we devoid this of the current uh, politics that we practice in our country? Because as we speak here and are worried about the economy, yes. the main big players are worried about 2016. How do we either come to power mm -hmm. or how do we stay in power? Yeah. Before we can come back to the table, because unfortunately this one, there was a court case, so everything has to wait, a court case. To finish. But so hopefully after 2016, there will be no court case. Before, you know, they can come back. And by that time, maybe all these statistics may not even be working. So how do we build our economy on this political tradition that we put on ourselves as a nation? I think, to, to, I think the politics of the country is destroying us. I mean, to put it in blunt terms. I mean, if you look at the data uh, um, uh, um, that we have in the country, you see a, co a, a, a trend. Every four years, your, your, your uh, uh, fiscal development has a problem. So the new government comes in the first year, tries to address the second year, and then third, fourth year, it moves out of order. Then. And when you look through, uh, uh, you see it from 1992 when we started going this democratic dispensation that we've agreed on. And that is why I said the politics is destroying the nation. We should be able to build upon each successive government. But rather, a government comes, builds, then the next comes, we, we go two steps back, and by the time we catch up, and you know the world is not waiting for us, things are also moving in the corner. So I'll say yes, the politics of the country is not helping us. And, and our data also tells us because you see a, a, a trend every four years. It, it falls back. Perfectly. And depending on how it falls and depending on how the world economy is, it can, it, it can be very, very disastrous for the country. I see. Moving forward, I mean, to, to the layman, Professor, to the layman, or, 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 uh, you know, he goes, you know, does a couple of breaks and then goes back home, probably sleeps in just his a shed somewhere or somebody's balcony. What, what is all this, well, what is the meaning to him? What can he do to contribute or how does he understand it? I, because sometimes I feel sorry for, uh, because he, he hears all this information on radio, day in, day out, day in, day out. What, what does, what is, how do we let him understand his role towards the economy? Well, I, I, I think for the ordinary person um, or the layman on the street, uh, he should, he or she should recognize that he, he or she is part of a complete whole. So whatever contribution you can make towards uh, national development, you do it to the best of your ability. Um, we, we, we should try to avoid the usual African or Ghanaian mentality, our attitude about work, we take everything for granted. Uh, it's usually about work, about time, about business, uh, you know, and, and 
be very professional with whatever activity we engage ourselves in. Now, you, you ask yourself, the same Ghanaian, when he or she is employed in the private sector or in a multinational company, would give his best, his or her best. Then it comes to a public sector. It becomes the usual abidea, you know, so nobody cares. I think we should, once we recognize that we are, together we stand and uh, we fall together, and therefore we need to contribute our quota, that, that will, would help the ordinary person. Um, I also think the National Commission for Civic Education should help translate some of this um, economic information or figures or you know, um, terms or terminologies to the ordinary person. Uh, because inflation has, is inflation. No, but how do you translate that to an ordinary person? How do you translate the GDP growth to the ordinary person? Unemployment and all, so that they, they would feel part of the process and, and try to be very supportive of government policies and strategies. Should we adopt a bit of protectionism to, to, to aid the economy a bit? Uh, Asuma Banda is crying now, listen. Uh, the, the playing field is not level yeah. because somebody borrows money at 2% from his country, brings his planes in, and they are flying at the same destination. Every month he has to pay 2% of, let's say, even if they borrow the same money, but you're paying 28, 30%. Should mm. we, you know, tighten the bolt or write the laws in such a way that maybe you have to borrow the money from here so that you are all borrowing at 30% to run the business. Otherwise, how does the Ghanaian, you know, enjoy this globalization in his own country? Maybe just to, to I, I think for the layman to appreciate this, we, um, government and institutions have their role to play. As much as my colleague said, the, the, the individual. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the government and institutions, I think it's high time we start coordinating certain activities in, in, in running the country. I, I would expect that at the beginning of the year, what's backed by solid research and solid state, Ministry of Finance should be able to, to, to predict what will happen in the year. And in that prediction, we should be able to also have a good idea how many times we are going to increase fuel prices, whether utility prices are going to go up, and then factor everything in negotiation of salaries. But currently what is happening is salaries are, are, dis are, are negotiated in January. In the middle of, of, of the year, utilities decide that, oh, pri uh, well, uh, crude, crude price gone up, so I increased by a certain percentage. and then. 160. Perfectly. And then um, all of a sudden we get up and we have to block the taxes corner. But you see, if, if, if we sit together, those institutions, and plan into the future, I think we can come out with one salary structure, having in mind how we expect the economy to, to move. So that when that salary structure is decided, in the course of the year, if petroleum price goes up or comes down, mm -hmm. utility price is factored within. Now petroleum prices we, we, is going down. Past that. Yeah, if, if I mean we, we, we can't throw away the protection issue because even the so-called developer Western countries still protect um, their industries. Um, if you talk about cultural subsidy, mm -hmm. um, Europe does it. They argue that because they want quality food, that is why they protect their farmers. U.S. protects, Japan protects. The challenge for us is whether we can sustain it, because it requires money, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is where the donors often beat us to it. Because any time we can't come out with subsidies and protection, then uh, and we also go for aid, then the, the issue comes. Uh, um, well, well okay. I won't give you aid, money to go and protect. You know, then then quickly we have to remove un un unprotected. unprotected <laughs> you know, but I think we need we need to some extent. Yes, we need to protect. But we need to protect strategically. Um, if you look at our import substitution industrialization strategy, um, infant industries remain infant for over a decade or two. Now, that, that is not the strategy. When you start to protect, the idea is that infants will grow to become adults 
and, and start chewing bones rather than <laughs> taking milk all, all the time. Right. Yeah. You know, but we have not been able to do that. And until we are very clear on the strategies to protect and move industries or uh, people from the umbrella of protection, then, then we cannot sustain it. And, and I would not argue that we go into that direction. Yeah. But about your point about this, this level playing field, um, mm -hmm. uh, I think what well, is fair, um, if you have a very good business strategy, you, you have a good business, you can also assess funds globally if you want to. Where I think it is unfair is where foreign companies are given undue advantage. They have access to key institutions in the country as compared to our local mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, any foreign investor comes in and uh, would have direct access to the uh, castle, for instance, uh, to, to the presidency. Uh, you and I, if we should start a business, I'm sure the challenge will go through before we even speak to the minister, of, you know. So I think uh, um, it's just a, 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 a typical example I'm providing. Yeah. We, we had a meeting in uh, Cape Town a couple of years ago trying to look at the textile industry. And we realized that with this Agua concept and, and the uh, export uh, promotion strategy that, that was uh, being uh, pursued, Governments, not just Ghana, across Africa, were providing land, were providing utility, were, you know, all kinds of things for most of these foreign companies at the expense of local companies. In the end, you ask yourself, what, what benefit? Uh, they were paying very low wages, and virtually, government was subsidizing these foreign companies. You know, so yes, we need to have a level playing field for our uh, industries. I mean, as uh, staying with the economy, obviously, can't we just pick maybe just two sectors, just two sectors, and say, as for this, we are going maybe ninety percent in just these two sectors. The rest, we can get the you know foreigners in to come and scramble as we're going, but some two sectors, and maybe we can grow from there rather than look at the whole economy just. Two sectors, I don't know, maybe a Greek and mining, maybe tourism and health or education and, and road, something which you say, as for this, we are going 100 or 90 percent Ghanaian on it. Mm -hmm. Can it work as economy? I mean, you know? no, I, I think it's, I mean, we, I agree perfectly, I mean, heading towards specialization. Yes, we need to. I mean, I if we don't specialize, then it's like touch on everything. At the end of the day, you don't know anything. Um, for instance, if we decide that employment is key, we need to identify which sectors we want to drive the, uh, I mean, uh, 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 this employment. If it's manufacturing or agriculture, yes, then we put in the incentives. Okay. Currently, one does one is difficult for one to appreciate where we want to go, whether we want to use employment to 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 to, to push the growth in the economy or not. But I agree perfectly with you, we need to find a way of specializing. I mean, countries that have, have done well, yes, you can always boast that this country is good in that. What is Ghana good in? We talk about the cocoa, but the cocoa that we even talk is at the mercy of the farmer. I always give an example that if cocoa farmers all decide that this young girl, I, I, I'm not going to put a lot of resources into cocoa, what is going to happen? Or the pizza farmer says, oh, this year, maize is not good, then means there will be no maize in the country. Okay. And that is why w what you are saying makes sense. What do we want to push as an agenda? Agriculture, fine. But you don't touch on 100 crops. <laughs> we should know two or three crops that we want to, 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 be, to have a comparative advantage in. Yes. So that when you have your limited resources, you can put it in that area for everybody to see what is happening. If you have a lot of resources, fine, they can go to, to all the sectors. Mm -hmm. And this brings me to the non-traditional export. It's a whole basket full. I mean, the number of non-traditional export keeps on increasing. Today, one, two enters the next month. Yeah, so anything apart from our traditional cocoa is non-traditional, which I think is, 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 is we need to focus a little. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'll take a break. Think? Let me take a break here, and then when we come back, we, because, because I'm really enjoying the education here, and I'm sure by the end of this interview, uh, we we'll would all come together as one and find something that has to drive this economy and make a positive change. We're coming straight back. Hello and welcome to this interesting conversation. In fact, education, we're all in the classroom today. I've got two professors in the house to my extreme left, Professor Felix Ankoma Asante, Director of ISA Legon, and to my immediate left, Professor Kote, Head of Department of Economics, University of Ghana. Probably just before we went on a break, you wanted to make a submission. Yeah, just a quick one. Um, Professor Asante hits the nail right on the head. But I just wanted to say, that this issue about picking one or two sectors and running with them has been a debate uh, for a couple of decades. Some argue for the balanced growth strategy where you make sure you, if it's a Greek industry services, you give them equal weight and move along. Mm -hmm. And others also argue that look, use the unbalanced growth strategy where you pick two or three critical sectors and move with them. I think all depends on the extent to which you do it, how well you do it. Uh, in our case, if we focus on agriculture and manufacturing, but these are the two critical sectors that employs the majority of the workforce, and we do it very well. I'm sure most, most people will be happy and smiling, but um, it looks like we are not actually focusing our attention on these critical sectors. Now it's services wholesale, retail, and, and that is where the banks want. If you want money, mm -hmm. that is where, you know, short-term, quick lending, you know, whereas Agric, uh, the bedrock of the country, uh, if you want credit to, to operate, you really struggle to get it. Another area which <coughs> I was going to go to taxes, but once you talk about Greek, let me touch on Greek. You see, I think because we have been, as a nation, lazy in developing a uh, human resource we just leave everybody that oh yeah you do your one acre he does his one acre he does his one acre mm -hmm. so half of the nation are all out there in the rural areas everybody with their one acre contributing to the basket mm -hmm. you can't fault them mm -hmm. but i think that maybe if we had developed you know the nation better uh, then one man could have 100 acres and do the farming and then the others could do more research into food processing uh, and stuff like that. But we seem to have sat back and just say, yeah, well, you live in Abomusu, you live in Edimasa, so you just stay there and cultivate your one acre and pay your token to society. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we could change that culture. Yeah. I, I perfectly yeah. agree with you. And we've been talking about structural transformation of the economy. I mean, with the oil coming in, we've all seen that the contribution of agriculture to GDP is going down. It's now about 22.5 or so in 2012, from almost 33, 35%. Okay. But at the same time, the resources going to agriculture is still is, is going up in terms of the government of Ghana's resources. Now, when you look at sectorial employment, you notice about 53% of the population, the workforce, is in agriculture. I mean, construction takes about 17%, mining 10.7%, manufacturing 0.4%. Okay. So now we know where the population is, the workforce. So if it is employment, what do you do? And at the same time, we have 53% of the workforce in agriculture, but now agriculture is contributing 22%. A lot of, of, of the population there, the contribution is going down. Um, Mining and query 10.7%, which is under industry, and it's also booming. Now, services with technology, you find you really don't need 10% of the population because Joy FM, you can run uh, uh, um, Joy TV with few people. Go where the days where you need a lot of people. So now services, because of technology, you don't need a lot of, of, of people. And so we, we need to, so we should be happy that services is driving the economy. Services driving the economy, but the, 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 the number of people services employed is very small. I mean, you go to the banks. Go where it is, you go to the bank. Somebody, there's supposed to be a printout. Somebody checks whether your name is there and you are. Everything, one person does everything. Mm -hmm. So something in the past three people were doing, now it's done by one person. Mm -hmm. So if such a sector is growing, it's growing at the expense of the workforce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even when it is growing, you need a certain level of scale to be in it. 
and end of late, you notice that Ghanaians, we, we don't have that scale. Because you see all those uh, companies using very sophisticated technology. You see expatriate staff. So that also tells you something is missing. Okay. So it, it, it's, it's growth is very important, but how it should is the question that we are saying that we need to find a way of discussing it. Mm. But on, on your point um, that yes, there are many peasant farmers in agriculture and, and yet output is not very uh, large or significant. I, I share that point. That is why I emphasize the point that we need to do it better. Now, the average farmer cultivates two acres uh, from our research, 1.5, two acres. Now, how productive is that two acres? Let's make that two acre, 1.5 land very productive. Mm -hmm. If it's seed, let's use improved seedlings. Okay. Um, a typical case is the tomato we, we uh, use in this country. I'm told uh, from research we've been informed that the ones from Burkina Faso uh, are much better because they use improved seedlings. When you blend or process, you get quality tomato paste. For us, what we do is the, we, we use poor seedlings and, and therefore when we process, 60% is water. So clearly there is a problem that we are not using the right techniques to till the land and get a maximum yield out of the land. And that is where uh, we need to focus some attention. Again, once we, I'm sure viewers, everybody applaud you for doing research and something which we are also taking out of our culture, how we will survive without research, only God knows. But you come up with this beautiful research. And one thing that comes up here is taxation and how we get everybody to pay tax. But as we speak, there are people or many people in this country today who don't have any birth certificate. And if indeed they don't have any ambition of traveling outside or going to vote, they are not registered or, you know, no alarm bell saying that, oh, there's professor in Legon or somewhere. Mm -hmm. So how... You know, how do you grow an economy with so many ghosts in the system? Because they are not registering anywhere. And they might be healthy, so they probably don't even go to hospital. He gets his uh, neem tree, you know, boils it, drinks it, and he's gone. And he's a citizen of the nation who hasn't registered. And he probably has his two-acre farm somewhere, yeah. but not contributing anything, you know, as in tax-wise to the state. Uh, but his son may be going to school, you know, and demanding that a teacher gets paid to be taught itself. So how do we bridge that side of the economy to get more money in? And maybe then the, uh, people can justifiably uh, demand more pay because there'll be more in, in the kitty. But how do we get more people on, in the tax net? We, we speak about broadening the tax base, getting the informal sector in. But we don't do what it takes. I was one of the people who held the na uh, national identification exercise. I thought it is one brilliant idea where everybody would get registered. Then at least we know where you are, the kind of economic activity you undertake. And, and then if there is a need to tax you, uh, we, we do that. But we, we have not gone very far with that exercise. So if you say you want to broaden the tax list, there are several businesses that are done in their homes, in people's homes. Some are hairdressers, they do them in their homes. Some are tailors and seamstress and what have you. So it is very difficult to really implement this strategy of um, broadening the tax base until we find a system of registering every Ghanaian, mm -hmm. knowing where each and every person lives and, and tracking them where possible. So once you have national identification, whatever you want to do, uh, it pops up on the system. Now we have a system where anybody at all can get up and get a birth certificate. Uh, you just go and choose get a, a new one. Yeah, choose a date of birth. Sure. Choose, you know, and, and that is where the telcos had problems when it came to uh, registering our SIM cards. Because people got all kinds of things to, to register. Okay. So it is about time we take street address system seriously. It's about time we register every Ghanaian and make sure we have a database where you can tap into whether you are in Tamale or Bolgatanga or whatever. That is the beginning. Then we can start uh, 
category in economic activities and which ones can be taxed and, and, and which ones can be tax exempt. Professor Sante, how do we link education into all these things, all these findings? Because there's a huge disconnect also yeah. between the uh, education and where we need to grow as a country. Yeah. No, in fact, you've, you've, you've said it. I mean, the growth of the economy, one also look at the education of the citizenry. Um, I mean, we are even finding it difficult to, to address the type of education system we want, whether we want three years or we want four years. And, and even if we want three years or four years, what should be done? Okay. Um, the world is changing. Things are becoming sophisticated. But it seems we've not taken advantage even to change how our education system is. So we have a lot of people going to school, a number of graduates coming out every year. They are not getting jobs. And those who get a job, there's been complaints that they are not living up to expectation. So there's a disjoint between the training that we are offering and the type of uh, uh, trained young guys that we need in the economy. People have been talking about the, the, the uh, disconnect between industry and, 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 and the education that we put. But where are the industries in the country? I mean, the, the little geography and, 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 and history I know of this That's country. That's a big question, isn't it? <coughs> where are the industry? The little geography and history I know of this country. The industries I know in Tema, when I was a small boy, it is the same industries I know today. And those industries, then our population wasn't the 24, 25 million. Okay. And those industries are still employing that same number any, or even less. So what have we added? We, so, so anytime we talk about the joint between industry and what industry is there to guide what we are being, uh, the type of training that we are offering? It's, it's amazing because I've been one person who's jumped up and down, but I've never asked the question that what industry am I even looking at joining? Because <laughs> yesterday I had uh, on the show, apparently, there's only 2% of the electricity that we use that goes to industry. 98% is for domestic use. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked at the statistic. 98% of electricity generation in the country is for domestic use. Mm -hmm. And only 2% go to industry so i think that's a big question as to what industry but let me just you know comment on i wanted to read some of the facebook wall uh, but I, I decided no because everybody thinks that we are talking about government as in ndc no. and and president mahama no but th this is an issue which has been asked from you know probably, probably buzia all the way and it's just built that's up exactly. and up and up so uh, viewers it's not it's not about government as in any individual it's, i think maybe it's just, sometimes i I like to use the word state yeah. you know maybe i like to use the word the state so that you know uh, people who support particular parties will be comfortable but i think we are just talking about as a state some of the habits that we have adopted which doesn't help the state is gonna it probably was there before mahama was born oh, yes. so please yes. uh, if you are a mahama supporter mm -hmm. you know this one says you know why wouldn't the economy look fragile if the desperate opposition flag wearer decide to hold the country around some good no no that's no, it's, no, no, it's, no, it's, no. it's the state is the state. It was even there before probably Kofo came in. It's just that we should all come together as a people. Mm -hmm. And like the question you put, this is one question as well. What industry Precisely. are we saying that education should be targeted towards? Mm -hmm. And I've never thought of it like that. And, and, and we have to say that services is driving. So everybody finished and wants to sell. Because the growth of what is pushing, I mean, the, 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 uh, the sector that is growing, is what is dictating what we are training. So everybody finishes, you start selling. <coughs> How do we get industry players, stakeholders to sit down? What will let us sit down and say, this is it. We are locking ourselves up in one room and by the time we come out, we will take a certain percentage of the economy away from state business or day-to-day -day politics business and go with it. What, what, what will make that happen? Well, the... I know the, 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 there used to be a private sector group that, that they used to meet. I don't know where they still meet and, and discuss some of the points you have raised trying to 
move along and, and sometimes support uh, government or take government on when it affects private businesses. Um, but it all de depends on the extent to which the state is willing to engage the private sector. Um, if, if you have a state that is has open arms and willing to discuss and support and provide policies or the enabling environment for uh, private business, then that, that kind of um, support or uh, situation you have just described can, can happen. You know. but, but otherwise, it, it becomes very difficult. And you see, the challenge we face is trying to devoid the economy from the politics. Um, oftentimes, um, businesses thrive or do not thrive depending on their uh, political links and patronage and and it doesn't help us it does not really help us and it's about time we we just say enough is enough and run this country uh, professionally uh, rather than mixing politics and, and and when everything is analyzed on on political grounds just just like the point you reached as if we are just discussing uh, President Mohammed's government, it, that is not so. If you look at our economy, right from the 60s up to now, farmers use the basic hoe and the cutlass. It hasn't changed. If you pick the budget statements for the past 10, 15 years, the same old things, we will do this, yeah. we will do that, we will do that. Yes, I'm waiting to see... Keep appearing every year. Exactly. Yeah. I'm waiting to see uh, at the end a document telling us matching every we will do which we have done you know trying to evaluate some of this this statement political st uh, statements otherwise we would continue to be a, a, in the state we find ourselves you see a lot of money has been spent on agriculture agriculture remains the same a lot of money has been spent on roads the roads remain the same you know so i think we, we need to move away from that a quick one on the education i think uh, uh, we need to restructure educational system entrepreneurship should be taught right from the basic level because we teach people with a concept that once you come out there is government employment for you no people should be taught in such a way that when they come out either they go into employment or they create jobs themselves we have not managed to do that business ethics uh, people are employed and, and the usual government business things are done the attitude, the attitude basically. Bas basically, you employ somebody, he or she doesn't show up, uh, you call to find out and say, I'm sick. You know, not, it's like, there's nothing wrong. I couldn't come. It rained. You know, <laughs> and, and we forget there are things like umbrellas and, uh. and whatever you, you know. So, and, and I think we should teach people basic economics at whatever level. Gentlemen, thank you very, thank you. very, very much. I enjoyed the conversation. And once again, to the uh, viewers, it had nothing to do with Better Ghana. This is a state, uh, and as Professor said, that we've been using the hoe and cutlass since 19, in the 60s, and we're still using it today. So when you complain about subsistence farming, it has nothing to do with the government of the day, but the mental attitude of you and I and the whole uh, collective state. Uh, as a, So please, do not think that I was bashing the government. No, not at all. I was just bashing the situation. Uh, to my extreme left is Professor Ankoma Asante, uh, Director of ISA, and to my immediate left is Professor Peter Korte, Head of the Department of Economy and indeed they have taken us to school today. My name is Nanan Sakwa. This is PM Express and as I say tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again. Thanks for watching.